I first met Jerry uh, and Evie, as a, uh, looking back, but she's not here. Um, I met first in 1980 at Mennonite Brethren Bible College here in Winnipeg. I was a freshman, Jerry was a couple years ahead of me, and I just simply assumed that by virtue of those little details, he must be much wiser and more mature than I was. And I imagine that's still the case. Um, so which is why he's getting this award today. Um, I remember though many very amusing stories that Jerry used to regale us with. I'll only mention one in passing now, which were stories of his summers spent painting grain elevators in Alberta and uh, with his buddies and how before they would go painting these elevators, they would stop at some MCC thrift store along the way and pick up black suits, old black suits, and they would paint in those suits all summer apparently until they were caked with green paint and ready to be discarded for the next school year. So those are my first impressions of Jerry. I've always been delighted by his joy of life, the, the sense of hope and vision he communicates, and the stories of the ways that he has sought to integrate his life and faith in Christ. Although we've crossed paths only rarely in the last 30 years, I've been always delighted to hear reports of your activities, and I've been given a few details of those to share here. According to Jerry, and I think he's going to say more about this, so I'll just mention this in passing, it was during his time at MBBC that he was exposed to the realities faced by people in developing nations. And um, I confirmed this afternoon that we were in fact in the same class on international development studies, a course taught jointly between MBBC and CNBC, but I think I'll leave Jerry to tell a little more about that when he comes to speak perhaps here in a moment. Um, and so it was subsequent to his graduation from MBBC in 1982 that Jerry went to Somalia on an exploratory mission on what would become a not-for-profit company named IDE, International Development Enterprises which once it was incorporated, Jerry became then its first country director and, and he stayed in Somalia till the end of 83, where he worked with, I believe it's Paul Pollock and Art DeFer, who was then High Commissioner of Refugees in Somalia. In 83, IDE expanded into Bangladesh, specializing in irrigation technology appropriate for small landholder farmers. And while exploring opportunities in Bangladesh, Jerry discovered that the United Nations had sponsored a couple of factories that were producing area carpets for export. They needed help with sales, and so Jerry co-founded a private company called Calora Interiors International to market carpets, and he's been, continues to be president of that company. And Jerry's interest, however, has not simply been in providing home furnishings, but in the interest, his interest has been in meeting the needs of people, people pr producing, people supplying, people purchasing, all kinds of people involved in various sides of this business endeavor. In 1984, Jerry married Evie Dirksen, another alum from MBBC. They have three grown children. Evie passed away two years ago after a long and courageous struggle with cancer. As a family, they lived in Calgary, in Montreal, and since 1996 in St. Jacobs, Ontario. And from what I was told, Jerry claims that living with Old Order Mennonites makes him wonder about going to horse and buggy instead of cars, but I think I'll believe that when I see it. Um, Jerry continues serving on the Board of Directors for IDE Canada. He's been involved for about 10 years with Ontario Mennonite Brethren Board of Church Extension in their work of church planting in large urban centres. He's a part of the Waterloo MB Church and I understand that Jerry and I have heard other stories of him using his skills and ventures to support missionaries serving overseas with MB Mission. Jerry has thoroughly engaged in church work, international business, international development and has done so as a representative of Christ's body on earth. And so for all these reasons, I'm honored and delighted to welcome you here to share with us and so we can celebrate together granting you this Blazer Award as a distinguished alumni. Jerry. Thank you, Andrew. I uh, echo the words of Cheryl. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm honored and, and humbled to be here today. Uh, I, I did go to MBBC and I did meet my wife, Evie, there. And she helped me and supported me um, with all of this and traveled the world uh, with me. And uh, so the hole that she left is uh, enormous when she passed away. Uh, her mom and dad are here, uh, Victor and Elvira Dirksen from Winnipeg. And uh, one of our kids, uh, our youngest, Rebecca, is here. And uh, I'm glad to have you here today. I attended MEBC from uh, 1979 to 1982, and it has been a major influence in my life. I think I came here for a degree, uh, not necessarily an education, and I ended up getting both. And I thank all of you involved in providing young people with education rather than just degrees. 
As a young person, I was sort of wired for business, which had been influenced by many things. Stories of hardship endured by our families fleeing Russia, stories of getting restarted on the prairies, many of uh, my family losing everything, not once, but twice by the age of 40. And I was influenced by Bible stories of Joseph, a, an excellent administrator, I've always been struck by that, and Solomon, who chose wisdom when he could have asked for anything, and the rich young ruler who could not let go because he was wealthy, and obviously, Jesus, who warns us about the deception of wealth and emphasizes that when we do something for the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the stranger, and the prisoner, it is, it, it is as if we have done it for him. I'm a follower of Jesus, and so this has had to be my challenge. And I wanted to try and do it in the context of business. Allow me to explain part of the journey. When I got to MBBC, MBBC was not exactly a center for studying business and commerce. <laughs> studying, and, and CNBC might have been different. I mean, we knew each other well. So I, I, I'm gonna reserve judgment on that one. Studying theology, history, music, sociology, and development is where it was at. And certainly a major focus of the school was what we were doing about the problems of the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, and the prisoner. My friends wanted to become pastors, teachers, musicians, professors, church leaders, and many of them have become that. I wanted to own a business, but this really didn't fit with the thinking of the day. Business was not part of the solution. More often, business, especially big business, in that era was seen as the problem. So if you can imagine, uh, as Andrew has already pointed out, one of our more left-leaning professors, I say more left-leaning because I think they were all left-leaning, just different degrees. So, so this left-leaning professor, Vern Ratzleff, invited a local business leader named Art DeFerre to speak in our development issues class, and I admired that because they were coming from what would seem to be very different ends of the spectrum, in, in actual fact, agreed on an awful lot. And in this, in this class, uh, Art was invited uh, uh, to come and speak a couple of evenings and to speak uh, about development issues. He had spent many years working for MCC and for World Concern, but brought his own unique perspective to our class. He asked us questions like, why would a poor Bangladeshi farmer who's trying to survive decide to have three wives and 10 children? In fact, during the lecture, Art asked me those questions directly. I don't know why he picked me out, but he did. And why the poor make the decisions that they do. I was intrigued and grateful. Grateful for the chance to be educated. We, in the wealthy Western world, did indeed have the majority of the resources. And we were guilty of injustices in an attempt to try and keep it that way. I credit my time in MBBC and my education with stopping me in my tracks. I had thought that I was on a certain trajectory to head into business, but now that all was being questioned, reconsidered, and needed to be adjusted. I'm grateful to MBBC for how in tune they were with me. Uh, I was a bit of a fish out of water. In order to graduate with a degree in contemporary ministries, the student was required to do a practicum. You might be a youth pastor or a camp director, uh, a music intern in a church. My practicum, custom made by my staff advisor, was to spend time in a local business that had expressed willingness to open themselves up and allow me to research a very difficult case, a study of well-intentioned uh, owners who had a physically handicapped employee and the situation went incredibly wrong. And then present this case study at a MEDA luncheon, Mennonite Economic Development Associates, as I'm sure you know. And 
that luncheon would be here in Winnipeg. So again, I came face to face with the pain of everyone involved in that situation and was forced to question a lot of my earlier assumptions and see firsthand the weight of responsibility that comes with being in business. So, after graduating from MBBC and the University of Winnipeg, I went back to my summer job in Alberta, as Andrew has pointed out, painting grain elevators. One day, somewhere in small town Alberta, I got a telephone call. It was this guy from class named Art DeFerre. He said, do you remember me? I said, yes, I, I do. He said, I'm calling you from Geneva. Earlier today, I was hired by the UN to run the High Commission for Refugees in Somalia, and I recall that you were interested in development. This may be an opportunity. <laughs> I, I have no idea how he found me on a grain elevator in Alberta. Cell phones were just maybe Invent, being invented. It was all very new. He found me. He said, I have a friend named Paul Pollack, and he wants to come to Somalia, and he wants to start an international organization for development, but he wants to do it with business principles. So kind of a multinational corporation, but for business. I can't hire you. My quota of Canadians and Brits and Americans is full, but if you come to Somalia, then I don't have to check you out, I don't have to do your insurance or do benefits, you're here. Well, he said, uh, we find things to do for people like that. So, he said, my friend Paul is interested in coming as well, the two of you could come together. The next day, a guy named Paul called me, <laughs> and he said, I, um, I'd like to start an organization for development, and, and I'd like to do it based on business principles, and if you're interested, let's meet and uh, go to Somalia. Um, I'll be at the Toronto airport on October the 4th. I'm coming from Denver, and um, I'll, I'll meet you there. So that's what I did. I quit my job. I went home to Ontario and asked my parents for an atlas. I opened it. You think I'm exaggerating. <laughs> to see where Somalia was, and prepared to go to Somalia. My parents did not question this. I don't know why not. I, I mean, I had a job with no pay for an organization that did not have a contract and actually did not yet exist and I was working for a guy named Paul that I'd never met. <laughs> and I was very excited. <laughs> Over the next 15 months, we started an organization in Somalia that has grown today to be a very uh, good uh, international development organization, helping some of the world's poorest farmers earn a better income through the use of irrigation, and some of the world's poorest families with hygiene and clean water and all of this is done through the use of business principles. Many of you are familiar with the organization IDE. Their Canadian offices are here in Winnipeg. These experiences, they build on one another, don't they? And as we traveled to Bangladesh from Somalia to expand IDE's programs, we came across some carpet factories that uh, Andrew alluded to. They were government factories, but they were funded and financed and planned by the UN, and they needed help with selling their product. So the three of us, Art and Paul and myself, created a for-profit company named Calora Interiors, and we began selling carpets. There were different purposes for this. Uh, we wanted to help market the products. We wanted to create jobs. And we also wanted to raise money for IDE and I have been in charge of this uh, company for 30 years and have been importing and distributing carpets from different corners of the world uh, ever since. We're a hybrid in many ways, with one foot in the world of commerce and with another in the world of international development. And we take a certain amount of what we make each year and we give it to IDE, who then can use it wherever they deem the, 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 wherever appropriate. The issues of how to be in business and somehow respond to these challenges of Jesus that I alluded to earlier, those issues raised way back in MBBC, they are still huge issues today 
and I, and I'm sure we, all struggle with them. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this weekend and to reflect and share with you about how foundational the time at MBBC has been for me and what an impact it has had. Thank you.